Um, if you have to leave or you know of anyone else who couldn't make it but wanted to learn about the program, we will be sharing the link to the um, recording online after the session. All right, so my name is Michelle Dowling. I'm the program manager for the um, Paralegal Study Certificate Program here at UC Davis. And I'm really excited to talk to you about the program. I think it's a really great program, a great opportunity for career changers and career advancers. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I always like to kind of launch with a poll to get to know um, our audience. And one thing we're always curious about with this program is how you found us. How did you hear about us? Um, I know things have changed how we do. We don't send out printed brochures or catalogs anymore. So it's looking like, wow, it's looking like the majority of you found us um, because of an internet search. We also do a lot of so social media posting um, and we do get people who, you know, other folks who they work with or friends of theirs have done the program and recommend it. So I'll give people a minute to fill that out. So it looks about 83% of you found us by searching the internet. Fantastic. And then about 17% of you found us from word of mouth. And those are the only two ways um, that most of you are reporting. That's really helpful. Thanks so much, Bridget. Right. So I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to cover today. Um, as you probably know, when you signed up, we are offering a hundred dollar discount off the program just for attending live today. Um, people who watch the video get the information, but only those of you who attend live will get that hundred dollar discount. I'm going to spend a few minutes introducing you to our team. I really want to make sure you know where to turn when you have questions, whether it's about whether to enroll or once you're enrolled about um, how to progress through the program. We're going to talk a little bit about the industry. This is a really exciting time to be entering the legal field. Um, so we'll go over some numbers and some information we're seeing. Then I'm going to go over the program. Uh, the setup's a little unique. The requirements are a little different than our other courses. So I want to make sure everything's really clear for you. And then we'll do Q&A. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to enter them into the Q&A box. If I can answer them along the way, I will. Um, if I don't answer your question, don't worry. It probably means we're either going to cover it in the program or we'll definitely address it at the end. Um, and if you have any technical issues, feel free to use the chat feature. I do have a few colleagues joining me and they'll try to help you troubleshoot. So as I mentioned, there is a $100 discount for just attending today. We'll be sending a follow-up email to you. It'll have the discount code. So when you enroll, you can use that online. And it'll also have the link to the recording. Um, in case you want to watch the session again or share it with anyone else. So this is our team. Um, our enrollment coach is Kathy Zhao. Hi, Kathy. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thanks for attending our in-person session. So Kathy's really going to be your first point of contact. She's really knowledgeable about the program. She can talk with you about your specific situation and help you determine if the program is right for you, if now is the right time to enroll, the best way to go about it, point you in the right direction for resources. I've put um, a phone number up there to our student services team. If you do, for some reason, need to enroll by phone, um, for example, if you're um, using a purchase order or something like that. I've also put um, Kathy's Calendly link, I highly recommend booking an appointment with her. She'll meet with you either by phone or over Zoom video conferencing. It's a really great way to just talk with her and kind of go over your situation and she can share information and resources with you. I've also put her email up there if you just want to reach out to her that way. We're also joined by Bridget Alvarez. Bridget's working tech today. Hi, Bridget. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Thanks, Michelle. So Bridget's our program rep, and she's the person that you would talk to once you become a student. She'll help you with any questions you have, um, kind of point you in the right direction if you have any issues with things like textbooks or um, if you run into trouble. And she's just a really good um, liaison with the instructors in the program. And then, of course, myself, I'm the program manager. You probably won't talk to me too much, um, but I always welcome information and feedback from students, you know, really encourage people to share how they found the program, any suggestions they have for the program. We're always trying to improve it, um, work with the instructors to really um, serve our adult student needs. So 
I do want to address the basics, even though you probably already have some ideas about why you want to either advance in the profession or move into the profession, but it's a really exciting time to become a paralegal. The average salary is very competitive, and the employment outlook is um, much higher than most of our other programs. We work with a lot of industries, and this one is growing at one of the fastest rates. And the nice thing about becoming a paralegal and doing it through our program is it's substantially less of a time and money investment than if you were to try to do it in person or do a longer program or do um, a community college degree and major in paralegal studies or even um, attend law school. Although we do have a good portion of students who do our program on their way to law school. So I'd like to uh, do another poll and find out a little bit about why you specifically are interested in this program. There's no right or wrong answer. Our program is open to everyone. We're open to career changers, people who are new to the field, have no experience, and we often also are open to people who are already in the field and are looking to advance. I'll give everyone a few minutes to fill that out. So it's looking like it's split. It's looking like about half of you are career changers, which is exciting. So you probably have experience in another industry, maybe studied another topic, and now you're interested in becoming a paralegal. And about, a, so that's about a third. And then about a third of you are already in the legal field and you're looking for career advancement. Perhaps your employer requires a paralegal certificate. And then about a third of you is just another reason. You know, um, a lot of people have their own businesses and they take this program because they want to learn more about the legal elements or they're just lifelong learners. Uh, we've had a couple former professors take our program as retirees just because it was something that always interested them. So there's no right or wrong reason to pursue this program. So the, to enroll in the program, the admission requirements are pretty um, open. You basically just need a high school diploma or GED. You do not need to have a college degree or even any college to do this program. That is not always the case. Um, a lot of students ask why our program is not ABA approved. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. One is the ABA that does the approval for paralegal programs is not the American Bar Association you're familiar with. It's, it's a professional association. And it basically requires that students doing the paralegal certificate program already have a college degree or that we offer the general education requirements so that they achieve a bachelor's degree, and that would be more akin to a community college. So we've decided to make our program more geared towards um, a wider population, and that's why we've decided to not partner with ABA, but we do follow other you know, state and local requirements. But the benefit of our program design is that you don't need to have a college degree or any college to start our program. We do enroll people every month, so we have cohorts starting online every month. So if you enroll now, you would start in the September 1st group. If you know you're not ready to start, but perhaps your employer wants to pay now, that's fine too. That's an instance where you'd wanna work with Kathy and make sure it's clear that you wanna enroll in a future session. Like I said, we have openings every single month and the classes start on the first of the month. The format is completely online. It's something we call asynchronous. And what that means is that you do have a live instructor. You have someone you're working with and you're assigned to. You do have other classmates taking the program in the same group as you, but you advance at your own pace. It is a six month program and it's um, there's no required live sessions. So we designed it so people can do it on the go. So if you're work nights or you are in a different time zone, none of that will matter because you can do the program on your schedule. You just need to achieve everything within that six month timeline. So that brings us to the time commitment. Um, I can't say this enough. When people are not successful in our program, it's rarely, rarely, rarely that they are not capable. It is 99.9% .9 of the time, the time got away from them. Their time management got the best of them. So we really encourage people to set aside about a dozen to 15 hours a week to work on the program. I understand you might have a work trip, you might have vacation or have you get sick. That's fine. You can take a week or two off but you're gonna then wanna catch up. We do provide a syllabus and the syllabus is designed week by week. You don't have to follow it at face value, but if you use it as a guide, it will help you tremendously. It's really important not to fall behind. Um, and we have all kinds of guides and advice about where you should be 
as you progress through the six months. And if you find yourself behind, you're really going to want to step it up. Um, you cannot do this program in the fifth month. Uh, it's just not, it's just too much. You are going to work independently with the instructor that you're assigned to, um, and they will offer feedback and guidance. And I encourage people to reach out to your instructor, talk to your instructor before you sit down and take an exam or submit an assignment so that you can get their feedback and make sure you're on track. Um, and your instructor is also someone to reach out to if you're struggling or if you, um, you know, have something come up in your life. The sooner you communicate with us, the better we can help you. And as I mentioned, you are progressing at your own pace. So it's okay if you're at a different place than the other people you started with. Um, everybody's different. Some people have a lot of experience. Some people have none. Some people study more slowly. It really is up to you. But um, I really encourage people to manage their time and set aside a chunk of time every week that they know that they're going to devote to this program. So the program itself is made up of four modules or subcourses. The largest one is Essential Skills for Paralegal, and that one has both written assignments and several exams. That one we recommend people devote the first three to four months to. Um, when we were in the classroom years and years ago, this was the course that was offered every single week where the other ones were offered in shorter time periods. So this is the guts of the program and you really want to make sure that you devote time to it and you stay um, on schedule. Once you complete essential skills for paralegals, you can do the other three mini courses in any order you'd like, and they cover the three main topics of law. And each of those uh, modules just has one final exam. So the nice thing is it just has the one final exam. Most people take about six to eight weeks to cover each of those subtopics, but um, you want to make sure you're prepared because when you sit down, take that exam, make sure you've really done the homework. Don't rush it because you really want to make sure you get a passing score. And that takes me to the requirements for the program. So this program um, is a little unique because it is what we call a pre-practicum program, meaning that when you complete it and achieve the certificate, you are prepared to go out into the working world and work as a paralegal. For that reason, we need to ensure that you have full comprehension. For that reason, you need to earn a 70% on each and every exam and assignment. It is not good enough to just have an average of 70% or more. You have to pass every single deliverable or assessment that you take as part of the class. And so that's why I mentioned when you're taking those mini courses like tort law that only have one single exam, a final exam, make sure that you have read the material and you've asked all your questions of your instructor and you are ready to sit down and take it because you just get that one chance to pass it. We also uh, require that students complete a minimum of 360 hours of work as part of the program. This is generally not a problem. The program is designed to require a minimum of 360 hours just to get through everything. But we don't audit this because even though the program is online, you're reading the textbook offline. You might be writing your briefs offline, studying for your exam offline. So it's kind of an honor system, but we have set on that number because that is the number that um, is required by the state of California, which is the strictest state in regard to paralegal requirements. They require 360 on-task hours in an academic program in order to meet the um, business code requirements. So that's the reason we designed our program that way. These are our instructors. All of our instructors are working attorneys during the day. And what's exciting about that is they are experiencing the law while they're teaching you. They are dealing with the same types of cases that they're teaching you to write briefs for. And so they bring a lot of real world experience. They've all been teaching us for a long time. So they're the perfect mix of practitioner and educator. Um, and our, our instructors are located in different parts of the country. So that's one thing we always say to people. It's all online. A lot of them will give out their cell number. They're welcome to talk to you, but just be cognizant that they might be doing a case on the East Coast or they may not be in California. So um, giving them time to respond to you. But they're really wonderful. They're all really responsive and supportive of their students. Um, and I, you can't go wrong with any of them. So this program um, uses a online learning management system called Paralegal Space. And this was custom designed by the program creators for this program. It's very user-friendly, very intuitive. And basically it has all kinds of study support. Um, it has your direct links to Lexis and Westlaw, which are the legal databases that you're given access to while you're in the program. 
and it um, is going to encompass all your exams, all your assignments, uh, all the templates and examples. It also has a message system where you can communicate with your instructor. So it's really your one-stop shop and it's really easy to move through it. My only advice is don't rush it. Really use the study support. Watch the videos because all the information you need to do the assignments and sit for the exams is in there. There's no gotchas, there's no catches, but if you skip stuff, you know, you're not going to get the, the benefit of the material. So I want to do one more poll. Um, even though we only require a high school degree or diploma, I am always curious where our students are coming from. Um, so we can get a sense of how much background you have. Like I said, you don't need to have um, any college coursework under your belt, but sometimes that time management skill that you gain, you know, in secondary or higher ed can be helpful. I'll give everyone a minute to fill that out. All right. So it's looking about half of you have a bachelor's degree. Fantastic. A um, little less than 10% have an associate or vocational degree. About 30% of you have some college. That's very typical. And about 13% um, of you um, just have a high school degree. This program is perfect for that as well, because it's an opportunity to move into a profession, get the practical knowledge, get the state certification, enter that profession to make you know, $50,000, $60,000 a year plus overtime starting and not have to attend, um, you know, a matriculated graduate college program. And it's also a great cost savings in comparison to that. So thanks so much for that. So when a lot of you reach out to us, you ask about certification exams. So this is um, something that's slightly different than getting an academic certificate like the one UC Davis offers. So I wanna be clear. The certification exams are not required by any state. You are going to have to have a bachelor's degree to sit for them. You are going to have to complete your paralegal certifi certificate first, and then you will pay to sit for them. Some of our students do pursue these. Um, they're usually offered um, by two major associations. They're just professional associations. If you're going into a specific industry or you know you want to work with a specific employer and they require this, excellent. Pursue it. Um, it is something that we support, but we just want to let people know you don't have to do the certificate and know then you're going to have to sit for the certification exam. It, it's not required. And in fact, when I've talked to our instructors who hire a lot of paralegals, they said, yeah, this is nice to have, but they're more interested in talking with the paralegal and seeing some of the work they did as part of their paralegal certificate program. So it's really up to you. As I mentioned, um, a lot of you also ask about the American um, Bar Association, like why um, have we decided not to partner with them? The truth is the majority of paralegal programs at universities in the US don't partner with them. Um, they have a great marketing campaign and I'm sure they add um, a lot of service to their members, but the truth is we thought it was a priority for us to serve adult learners and career changers who don't necessarily have a college degree. That's really where UC Davis is coming from. And so for that reason, we've decided um, not to partner, but it doesn't mean that our program is not reputable. It's approved by the UC Davis School of Law. It's accredited. It meets all the necessary requirements. It's just one particular association that has different requirements that we've decided not to pursue. I do wanna make a little pitch for, the, for those of you who are local for the Sacramento Valley Paralegal Association. This is a great resource in our area. It's really reasonable to join. And one of the nice things about if you're a member, um, so I encourage you to join before you do the program and not after, if you're a member, you get 10% off your tuition. And that's a really steep amount of money in this program. Um, our tuition is $6,995 for this program. That would be almost $700 off. Um, a lot of people will be like, oh, I'm going to join when I'm done. No, join now. Not only do you get this great discount, but you get um, invited to all their workshops, networking events, lectures. They have a great online job board. So this is really a great um, resource for those of you, especially the career changers, because it'll give you what you need to learn more about um, opportunities that are out there and to network with people in the field. I just want to remind everyone, uh, UC Davis does not allow us to stack discounts. So if you do do the Sacramento Valley Paralegal Association 10% off membership discount, that would be a better deal than the $100 coupon you're getting today. So you just need to pick the coupon or discount that's best for you. 
there is an additional fee for textbooks in this program. We will send you information on how to order the textbooks. Some of them are produced as part of the program, so you're going to order them through um, our partner. But it is a separate amount of money. So if you are applying for a loan or for employer support or special funding support, you're going to want to make sure to include the cost of the books in your application as well. I will say the cost of books has been coming down. More and more of these books are available online or for rent. And that's a great option. That's fantastic. Um, it really keeps students' expenses down. I did put Suzette's information up here. Suzette is our student finance specialist. She is a great resource for people who are using special funding or need to pursue or investigate special funding to pay their tuition. Uh, here's her phone number. We also have a great section on our website under student services, financing your education. And it talks about all the different loan partners we have, VA funding, um, workforce innovation, reallocation programs. If you were in AmeriCorps, there's a lot of opportunities for adult education funding. Um, I will say you will want to leave enough time. A lot of this funding is with nonprofit or government organizations. There is a bit of bureaucracy. Um, it is not too early now to start doing it. If you can't get your paperwork together for, for your funding for the September cohort, you could always do the October cohort. And Suzette will help let you know, you know what forms you need to fill out and how much time you should expect to have to wait. But um, I just always like to advise people, don't wait until the last minute because this can take a little bit of time. So we do have additional programs beyond the paralegal study certificate. They're called the specialist programs and they're in 22 specific topics. And this is an opportunity for people who have done our program or perhaps you did a program somewhere else and you wanna dive deeper. These programs are also six months long and they're made up of three mini courses on the topic. And they um, cost $1,995. You also can use um, your Sacramento Valley Paralegal Association 10% discount on these. But this is a great opportunity for people who are looking to move even farther in their career. Something to keep in mind um, as you move through your education. So that completes my formal program. I do want to um, entertain your questions now also want to loop in Kathy because she talks to students every day and find out what kind of questions, um, Kathy, that you often get. Yeah, so the, the most common question I get is, the first is the time commitment. So we really need to discuss with you if you would like to share with me about your working, about your, let's say, for example, family obligations. So, so I will help you to identify really 15 hours for you is hard or not. And the second one is that uh, uh, how to pass the exam and what is the, the course, it, it, different module, what, what do you need to expect during the study? So pretty much uh, the third one is that we can help you with uh, the financial aid, uh, not financial aid, it's a different uh, loan. And also if you are working with the workforce related funding, contact me as well, we can help you with that as well. So that it will be, that are the most the three common questions I've been uh, discussing with the students. Okay, all right, great. Yeah, sometimes too, people will say, you know, what's the best time to do the program? The beauty mm -hmm. of adult ed is we offer this program 12 months of the year and every month is the same. It doesn't, there's no difference in what kind of service you get or how the program is designed. So I really encourage people to identify a start date that works for them. Don't rush it. Um, because we really want you to be successful. So really think, am I going to have six months where I can really devote to the program? Now, you can finish faster than six months. We occasionally do have people who do that. Um, maybe they're not working right now, and so they have a little bit more time. That's the beauty of the self-paced program. You can go faster. Um, but I definitely would say there's no wrong time to do it. A lot of people start in the fall. I think it's just because it's when people start thinking about school. But we're ready for you whenever you're ready. Um, someone has asked about oh, what kind of computer requirements are there for the course? Yeah, it's basically gotten so much simpler. You really just need a stable internet connection and a PC or laptop. Um, and we haven't, it's funny, in the early days of the program, 10, 20 years ago, we would get, you know, some help desk questions about the technology. And I have to say the last few years, it's been really stable, worked really well. And I think that's just because we've all become more accustomed to working online and the technology has improved a lot. 
a couple other questions coming in. Does the program offer educational credits that can be applied to a college program? Yeah, so the nice thing about our programs is they are academic certificates. This particular program is 21 quarter units um, approved by the UC Davis Law School. Now, whether another institution will accept those credits is up to them. That's just how the college system works. So you would definitely want to ask any college or other degree granting institution if they accept outside credits. And if they have any questions about our program or our credits, they're welcome to reach out to us. I'm happy to talk with anyone. I've done that in the past, sometimes where the student is, you know, gets caught up in the the lingo and, and we're always happy to explain it. It's 21 quarter credit units. Um, how long does it take for us to get the textbooks? Yeah, this is something I should have mentioned. They've done a nice job designing the beginning of the program so that they um, load a lot of the textbook content onto the site in case you're waiting for your textbooks. So you definitely wanna order your textbooks as soon as you get the information, which you will get as soon as you enroll. Um, and most of them just take a few weeks, they're pretty quick, but with supply chain issues lately, order them as soon as you can. If you don't have them when the program starts, don't panic. Just let your instructor know and they can keep supplementing you with information until your textbooks come in. And then also don't worry about your Westlaw and Lexis logins. You don't need those for several weeks into the program. Some people are panicked. You know, I didn't get that information right off. It's okay. The curriculum is designed understanding that people need a few weeks to get settled. Can we come back anytime to take additional programs? Absolutely. The six month, four module paralegal studies certificate program has to be taken in the six month sitting, but those additional specialist programs you can do anytime you're ready. They're separate. And those are not academic. Those are for continuing education units. Does the, despite the program not being ABA approved, have people been able to find paralegal jobs fairly easy and quickly after graduating? Yeah, we have had real success with this. The students have found that the program really gives them the information they need either to get advancement at their law firm or job or to break into the job. Um, if you ever have you know, any questions, any need for references or recommendations, I really encourage you. Um, most of the instructors are happy to give out their personal information to stay in touch with students after they graduate, and they can offer that support. Um, we're also working here at UC Davis Continuing Professional Education on some um, career preparation workshops, and so keep an eye out for those as well. How flexible are paralegal careers? Yeah, so I've had this question before. This person asked, you know, are there opportunities to work freelance or independently remotely? You know, obviously everyone has been turned upside down the last few years and a lot of industries have gone um, remote or hybrid. Um, and there is freelance work in paralegal. When I talk to my instructors about this specific question, they would say, you know, the truth is that that flexibility to work completely freelance often comes once you've established yourself and built up a client base as a paralegal. So I don't necessarily want to encourage someone to go into this uh, career change thinking, oh, when I get out, I can just work at home and suddenly we'll have clients. Or there's some kind of like, you know, place where I can go and find clients. It really is a the legal profession, much like the medical profession, is still rather traditional. And probably what you're going to find are hybrid opportunities where you're in the office a little bit and then you can work remotely a little bit. Um, and then build up to a part-time or freelance operation. What are some local companies graduates have gone to work for? Yeah, it varies greatly. And, you know, because our program is online, we have students from all over the world. Um, so it's a little trickier, but we do have a lot of um, local attendees. And so they're working in the local community. And I'd be happy to I have... Um, some alums that I occasionally talk to, and I'd be happy to put people in touch with some graduates if they want to find out a little bit about their experience, not only in the program, but after they finish the program. Right. After I complete the program, how does it take, how long does it take to get the certificate? Yeah, so immediately, so you have two weeks for grades to be posted. Once grades are posted, you will be able to see your grade report online. And for a lot of people, that suffices for an employer or for job applications, you know, because it's a it's an informal transcript of their successful completion. The certificate itself takes a little longer because it's printed. They, you know, they batch them and produce them on a monthly basis. So usually people's certificates are taking about a month. But the certificate at this point is more ceremonial, um, important and valuable. 
But if you need confirmation of successful completion of the program, there are other ways we can get that for you while you wait for your certificate. What is the success rate or passing rate of the exams um, in obtaining employment? Yeah, that's a great question. So I'll be honest, um, we the majority of our students are successful. We do have arrangements. I don't usually get into it in the web, um, the information session, but we do have arrangements for people who fail just one exam. We understand life happens, things go wrong. And so we would work with you at that point. There are some fees involved um, because we have to meet the requirements of the program. But um, if you do fail just one exam, or even in some cases struggle in two modules, there are other opportunities. And that's something we could work with you at the time. Um, but the pass rate is, I think, you know, pretty high. I rarely, rarely talk to people about doing a reset. So most people who put the time into the program succeed. The majority of people who just bomb out literally never log on. And that's something I don't understand. I think perhaps maybe they're being you know, funded by someone else or their life completely changed on them. But um, most people who take the time to do the program and sit for the exams pass. The people who usually fail are the ones who never even showed up. Um, are we able to brainstorm with other students or is it solely independent? Yeah, it's primarily independent because everyone's working at their own pace, but we do do an orientation for each monthly cohort and you get to meet the other students in the program and you you know can correspond with them certainly throughout. And your instructor may even say like, oh, I'm gonna do office hours and invite everybody in their cohort. But primarily you're working with your instructor because the other students may be at a different place in the program. Um, just trying to catch up on the questions. Do you require an internship or is it possible to do an internship? Yeah, we do not require an internship. We don't have that as part of our program. That's something that'd be great to partner with um, Sac Valley Legal or Paralegal Association or another paralegal association if you're in like LA, um, cause they're gonna have more internship opportunities. I just want to make sure which of the courses is the most difficult to pass. Yeah, I would say essentials of paralegal skills is the most intense one because it covers the largest amount of information. So that's and it has, as I mentioned, half a dozen assignments, half a dozen exams. They really want to make sure you've mastered that one. So that's the one you're really going to want to put your time into. And then once you complete that, and you move on to the specific topics, you're going to probably have a lot more to draw on. Um, we used to see a lot of people struggle with contract law, which is one of the specific topics. And then um, we redesigned it a few years ago, and I think it's a lot more student friendly. And so we've seen the, um, the success rate go way up. So we are always tweaking the program and trying to respond to student concerns. Um, despite the program not being ABA, oh yeah, we already answered that. Just want to make sure I got everybody's questions. You know, and there's no problem if you think of a question afterwards. In fact, let me go ahead and put Kathy's info up here. You're welcome to contact Kathy um, after this session and ask her any other questions you have. For someone who doesn't have any legal background, how is this program? The nice thing about this program is it's, when I say pre-practicum, what I mean is it gives you all the information and skills you need to go into the profession and to pass the program. Um, so they it's designed with the assumption that you don't have any legal background. And it has tons of resources and glossaries and you know explanations and samples. So for someone who's been in the profession for a while, they may not need you know to, to utilize all those tools, but for someone who's new, it, it's very user-friendly. And I would say at least, at least half our students are brand new to the program or to the topic. All right, looks like Kathy's also tackling a lot of these questions as we go through. While we wait for some more questions to come through, I am just gonna take it back. I'm gonna do one more poll. I just wanna ask you how beneficial you found this session. I'm always changing it, changing up the information and the format. And I'd really love um, if you folks could fill out, um, Bridget's gonna put the survey up and fill that out and just let us know um, what you found helpful and what you would like us to keep, what we should think about changing and all that type of thing. So while people fill out the poll, I'm gonna put Kathy's info back up there as well.
And I want to thank everyone for attending today. I know how busy everyone is. And I know myself, I sign up for webinars all the time and I don't always make it to them. So I really appreciate you all making it. And I hope it's been helpful. And I hope nothing else um, you take away Kathy's info so you can follow up more and really talk to her about your personal and specific situation. All right. Not seeing any more questions come in. All right. Well, thank you all so much for attending. Um, oh, sorry. Can you retake the program if you don't meet the 70% pass rate? Yeah, I didn't really get into this too much because it's kind of a unique situation. But we do have um, a policy document that outlines all the limitations. And basically, if you fail one exam in one of the modules or fail one of the modules, there is an opportunity to retake it. You do have to pay a fee and you do it at the end of your six months. We give you more time. If you fail tests in multiple modules, there's very little we can do because we have to ensure full comprehension. But if you do just kind of have a one-off or you, you know, fail one of your essentials exams and then you fail your torts exam, your instructor will work with you and Bridget will guide you through the steps you need to do to sit for a retake. So not all is lost, but I can't emphasize enough, sit down for those exams thoughtfully, you know, make sure you have the time to commit, you're prepared and things like that. But no, we don't, we wouldn't just throw you to the curb because you, you know, missed one, but it is a special process because it is an academic program. We have to follow certain procedures to make sure that it still meets the academic integrity. And can I re-enroll in the entire program? You can always re-enroll in the entire program. So let me talk a little bit about enrollment. So basically we have a two week full refund period. So if you enroll in the next section and you start class on September 1st, you have until September 14th to withdraw from the program and get your money back. You just pay like a $30 processing fee. So I always encourage people to be good consumers because this is a lot of money. So two week refund period, it's not for you, your life has changed, whatever, you can get your money back. After that point, you have purchased the program, you've purchased the course, we have paid our bills. So you know we don't have your tuition to give back to you. You can still go through the program, you can drop the program anytime within your six months to avoid a failing grade on your official transcript. And then you can take the program again at a time that better suits you. You will um, get a different client case study. So it's going to be same curriculum, but slightly different. You know, we obviously have to do that. Um, but you would pay for the program again. So really be thoughtful about that two-week refund period and make sure that, you know, make sure first that you talk to Kathy and enroll, um, you know, think about enrollment. And then once you enroll, if anything changes, that's the time to take care of it. What's the time limit? So I'm not sure if, if that question is about the time limit to enroll or the time limit to complete the program, but um, we're accepting enrollments for the September 1st cohort through August 25th. Uh, we usually stop the third week of the month because we need time to process the enrollments. So until August 25th, you can enroll on September 1st. And then after that, you'll enroll on October 1st. You have six months from your start date, say it's September 1st, to complete the program. Uh, the exam, exams are timed. So you're going to want to sit down in a quiet place, make sure you have full attention and complete the exam in that way. Hopefully I've answered all the questions. And like I said, um, Kathy is happy to talk with everyone. If you think of questions afterwards, you'll be getting an email from her with the link to the recording and the discount code. And um, I really encourage you to talk with her. It's an amazing program, but we want it to be the right program for you. Um, we really want you to be successful. And it's really exciting for us when um, I, I often attend Sacramento Valley Paralegal Association events. And I love to have a table and talk to have all my graduates come back and talk to me about what they're doing and what jobs they've landed and how much overtime they're getting. And it's really exciting. So, all right. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Oh, and the slide deck will be emailed. It's it's a video. So it's a video to the, um, the recording. But if you have any specific information about information I covered, Kathy can share that with you. All right. All right, everyone. Thank you again. Look forward to seeing you in our classes.